Okay, so today's video um, is about learning how to write um, integral notation um, from our idea of Riemann sums. So this video is for seventh period. I'm sorry I couldn't be there today to help you through this, but um, this is also for anyone who might need to review this later to prepare for the AP exam or prepare for our chapter five test. Um, this will only come up a little bit, um, but still important to kind of understand the reason why Riemann sums are a good estimation for an integral given a certain amount of rectangles. And so I've drawn a very simple graph here to just kind of help us. I drew f of x equals x squared on the interval zero to two. Um, and you can see that here. I've also drawn uh, two, re uh, two rectangles here to kind of estimate an area using a right Riemann sum. Um, and this kind of will help us visualize how, um, how we find this area and how this formula comes about. And I want you to know that it's all about the formula area equals base times height. And that's the area of each of these rectangles. Um, and so that's how we're gonna find the area under this curve in general. And so the first question that's on your worksheet that goes along with this um, is the question, how do you represent the length of the base of each rectangle? Well, in this case, we made two subintervals. So I took the length of interval and I divided it by the number of rectangles. Okay, and this was equal to Move this over a little bit. The length of my base, and that's this part right here. Okay, um, but in this case, our very simple case, we had the length of the interval, which was two, and we made two rectangles, so my base is equal to one. So if I was plugging it into a formula, into my base right here, I would have base of one. But my second question is, what if I want more rectangles? And hopefully through this activity that we did, you saw that we could use more rectangles to make, and more subdivisions, to make our area approximation a little bit better. Oops, sorry, that was the wrong way. I'll go this way, go this way. Just a rough sketch here. Very rough. But you can see that that is a little bit, still an over approximation, but a little bit better. Um, and so the more rectangles we divide our interval into, the better our estimation will get. So let's say we wanted to divide the, still the same length, the length of the interval, but by an unspecified number of bases. So we would just call that N. And that's still the length of our base. Okay, and that's what we're gonna go with. And, and we can let the number of rectangles go to infinity. And we'll see how later we're gonna use a limit notation, limit n goes to infinity, to get an infinite number of subdivisions and therefore the most accurate representation of the area under this curve. But the th second thing we would need in our formula other than the base would be the height. And so when we were doing our Riemann sums today, you went over to the endpoint that you were using and plugged in that endpoint into our function to find the height. So we would say that f of x represents the height of each rectangle. Okay, so I would match up some base with some height and that would give me the area of one rectangle. Um, and we plug in, as a note, plug in an x value. Notice that would be the length of one base. So I move over one base, I would plug in an x value here into f of x to really calculate the height. Okay, all right. But again, how do I know where to start? Does it always start at zero? What if I use n rectangles? How do I know how many to move over? So we could say that the height that we are gonna calculate could be based on some formula for x. And I will say that the the x we plug in, in general, could be represented as the starting point. In this case, it's zero, but it could be something else. We could have started at one, we could have started at two and kept going, okay? The start plus the one base, however much you moved over. So maybe one base is just this much. Maybe one base is this much, okay? So, but I'm gonna represent 
So starting point plus the length of one base. But that could also be represented as starting point plus our formula here. The length of the interval divided by n. Okay, so this, if we plug this into our f of x, that will give us the height of our rectangle. So let me just recap really quick. If our base is the length of the interval divided by n, then the height that we're going to multiply them by will be f of our starting point, our starting x value for the interval, plus the length of interval divided by n. Okay, and if I multiply base times height, I will get my area of one rectangle. Now, one other piece of information we might need would be, well, what if I don't want to move over just one rectangle? What if I want to move over two rectangles? So instead of just at getting here and plugging it in and finding this formula, what if I want to move two over and find the next rectangle? What if I want to move three over and find the next rectangle? So we need some kind of other variable that will enable us to kind of count the number of rectangles we're on. How many rectangles do we move over? So we're gonna let k be a sort of counter. And it represents what rectangle are we on? Meaning taking the area of. This is important because we want to add up a bunch of rectangles. We don't want just one single rectangle to represent the area of this whole thing. So we want to be able to sum them all up. And this brings us to kind of our final, our final formula for the sum of this area. So my area formula is going to be a sum. And it's going to be a sum of the, a bunch of area formulas. Okay, and so that's just going to be base times height. So I'm going to write height first height, which we represented as f of start plus, and now I'm going to add in my k because I want to know maybe k times the length of the interval divided by n. And I'm sorry that t looks like a, this looks like a t here. I'm trying to make that more clear. Okay, so again, just to remember, this is my starting point of the interval. K is the counter for which rectangle I've moved over, and this is my base. So how many have I moved to the right? This is what we plug in, this, this inside gives us an x value, and that's what we plug into f to find the height. This is my height. Oh, I remember, I realized I did that in pink earlier, so I will continue to do that in pink. This is my height. I need to multiply it by my base, and my base is my length of interval. I'm running out of room, so I'm abbreviating that INT. Length of interval divided by N, the number of rectangles. Okay, and so this is my base. So it looks very complicated, but it's still just summing up base times height summing up a bunch of areas of rectangles. But as I mentioned earlier, we want the number of rectangles to be infinite. So we're gonna add a limit on here. Limit n goes to infinity. So we've got an infinite limit, and then we need to use our summation notation to change k. So we'll start with k equals one, and we'll let k go all the way up to n. Okay, and that's because n is going to infinity. And this is how we get the general notation for a Riemann sum into integral. So the way we represent this as an integral is the integral sign actually is this portion right here. If I let there be an infinite number of rectangles and I'm adding everything up, that's what it means to integrate. And integration is really just a very precise sum. Okay? And this is f of x, 
which I hope is has been made clear. This is our base. That is represented by a little bitty tiny change in x, like dx. And if I was given my interval, it would be from a to b, some starting lower bound to some upper bound. Okay, all right. So I wanna do one example, and let me wake up my computer again here. Sorry, I had to see a nice arm there. Okay, but I'm gonna flip the page and I'm gonna use this formula to write the Riemann sum notation, woo, that we've been using, uh, for the equation we've been using today. So you have been calculating, for everyone who wasn't doing the activity for today, they were trying to estimate the integral from zero to four of x squared dx just by using multiple Riemann sums. Left Riemann, right Riemann, midpoint, and then trapezoidal at the end. Um, so in order to write this as a Riemann sum notation, we need a couple of things. First, we need the length of our interval. And I can see it goes from zero to four, so the length of my interval is four. Second, I need what x value I will start this at. And that x value is my lower bound, which is zero. And those are really the only two pieces of information you need. Okay, So my summation notation will, as usual, start with a limit. Limit number of rectangles goes to infinity. I will have a sum. And my counter k will start with 1. We'll go up to n. All right. Now you can write this in either way you would like. Um, I like to write base first, just because I feel like that's the easiest. So remember, I'm looking for base times height. And my base is going to be the interval divided by the number of rectangles. So my base is going to be four divided by number of rectangles. And I like to do that first because I will need it to find my height. My height will be the function f, and into it I will plug the selected x values. The x values will start at zero, and I will add on some number of rectangles, each of which has a width of four over n. Okay, so starting point plus k times base, if you wanna think about it that way. And if I really wanna make this a true notation specific to this function, I can just rewrite this. Okay, one up to n, and instead of using f of x, I will actually use my f of x notation here. So that would mean I would be plugging in this wherever I see an x in this equation. So that would mean zero plus k times four over n squared times four over n. And there you have it. That is my summation notation. Now, you don't have to write this zero. I'm writing it because I want you to see how the starting point in our interval interacts with how to plug in numbers, because I could start anywhere. If my starting point had been one, I would have put a one here instead. Okay, but well, hopefully that makes it a little more clear on the notation. Okay, maybe I'll do one more example that's also in the notes, just so you can see a different one. So this is number, or this is example one. It says, write the, which of the following limits is equal to this integral? The integral from two to five, of x squared dx. And so this is about, this is the same function as before, just a different interval. So if I look, I see that the length of my interval from two to five is three. And I see that my starting point in now, instead of zero is two. So my limit notation that I'm looking for is still limit and goes to infinity the summation from k equals one up to n of f of starting point two plus k times base, which I didn't do first this time, but k times three over n times base three over n. Okay, if I really wanna make that official to this function, I will have n goes to infinity, summation, and all of this goes in k, or excuse me, goes in x, my variable. So two plus, maybe I'll represent it as three k over n 
squared times 3 over n. And if you are looking at the worksheet um, today, that is answer choice D. Okay, I'm going to leave the other example for you. Um, make sure, I posted some hints online on Google Classroom, make sure you look at those hints uh, to kind of help you out because that last one is a little bit tricky.